now that uh, we have seen the data now let us understand what kind of decisions we want to make uh, using a quantitative algorithm so essentially as i said earlier uh, we want to first of all understand uh, how can these uh, uh, suppliers be segmented uh, more importantly we want to also understand the attributes and what kind of what attributes lead to some other attributes for example given that a supplier any given supplier any uh, not only uh, out of the 20 but any given supplier right if any given supplier is uh, is known to have a very good quality of senior management does it lead to good quality reputation uh, the other thing that we discussed for example does the or if, if the if the supplier has a very good quality reputation uh, do they always charge a premium so ca can can these actually be interpreted uh, from uh, the data that we have uh, uh, seen uh, using some kind of a qualitative algorithm some kind of a algorithm so that's what uh, we will look at the method that uh, we are going to select uh, is essentially unsupervised learning because there is no uh, there is no independent variable there there is no why uh, as as uh, uh, there are in many algorithms so this is clearly an example of unsupervised learning more specifically what we are going to look at is essentially some kind of an association rule mining so uh, as i said uh, uh, based on similarity what kind of decisions what kind of attributes uh, uh, are important what what kind of attribute value leads to some behavior uh, in a uh, in, in the supplier right uh, uh, as i said uh, do employee skills do good employee skills lead to good quality reputation right uh, uh, as i said uh, earlier uh, does highly ranked uh, highly ranked senior uh, management leads to uh, good quality reputation right uh, or uh, 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 should the supplier invest in uh, uh, building good quality network so that it can demand uh, a good price premium so can can these questions be answered right uh, so that's what we will do uh, uh, using the data that uh, we have just now discussed using a technique called association rule mining so just to uh, now let us discuss the method in detail uh, so uh, a disclaimer all the mathematics uh, uh, used in this uh, uh, example has already been uh, uh, explained uh, in the classic book uh, so all the notations and equations uh, uh, in this slides are actually taken from the classic uh, the elements of statistical learning i happen to have uh, i happen to have a slightly older version of the textbook uh, but uh, obviously there are newer versions available what i have is only 2011 version so uh, and and we all know we all know this classic book uh, uh, amazing and uh, uh, all the notations are actually from that book so uh, what is the uh, what is the rule uh, uh, goal of association uh, rule mining association rule mining is essentially to find the combinations of attribute uh, ratings that appeared most commonly uh, most most frequently in the data so let us take this uh, uh, the vector x uh, vector x has p uh, uh, dimensions right and obviously p are the uh, attributes right uh, p attributes and uh, uh, let us say that uh, uh, if 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 we were to assume that each of these xj values can take only zero one values uh, then what we refer to is the market 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 basket analysis however that's not the case for us uh, for each uh, uh, for example for our exam uh, for uh, for our data uh, xj values are not binary uh, we saw one two three right uh, possible values are one two three so uh, clearly not we are we are not talking about a binary uh, uh, element matrix uh, uh, xj right uh, uh, each xj can can uh, can can take on different values not only binary values however uh, if we were to generalize this assumption that's what we are going to do uh, that xj may take on any finite set of values right finite set of values for us uh, it is actually uh, it is actually 1 and 2 and 3 right uh, so let this set be sj let say sj denote the set of values that each xj values can take right so uh, uh, then what uh, let let that let that small sj be a, a subset of uh, uh, this sj uh, capital sj uh, then the goal of rule uh, goal of association rule mining is to find the probability that our value our our variable belongs to this smaller sj for example uh, let us say uh, this smaller uh, sj could actually be a value it need not be a small subset it could be a value let us say one right so what is the probability that uh, the uh, supplier is rated one uh, on on the jth uh, on the jth attribute and we want to maximize this probability right uh, we want to find the probability uh, as large as possible so what what is our goal goal is to find these subsets uh, subsets or values for which the probability is the largest 
the probability is the largest so we can say that oh you know what in our data uh, not not all the suppliers are rated high all the time uh, most of the time suppliers uh, get a rating of uh, uh, two on uh, quality reputation three on pricing uh, premium uh, two on um, senior management so that's that's what we wish to find out we wish to find out the subsets s1 s2 s3 s4 all the way to sp such that the probability that our variable belongs to that smaller subset is large as large as possible but this also may have some difficulty right so uh, what we are going to do is because why, why will this have difficulty this will have difficulty because our sj is not a binary set so what we will do is we will create dummy variables uh, x1 x, uh, sorry z1 z2 z3 zk uh, capital k and capital k is the uh, summation of uh, the entire cardinality set so what is our uh, for example what is our smaller uh, what is our capital sj actually uh, capital sj is 1 2 and 3 possible values that the variable can take right so for us and this is true for all j's in our example in our data so uh, cardinality of sj will be actually 3 in our case in our case uh, in our data that we saw right so uh, what is k then what is capital k capital k is uh, 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 3 multiplied by how many uh, uh, attributes that we had i think 7 attributes or 8 attributes whatever we had so we will define a binary variable a dummy variable uh, binary I, i'll come to that uh, z1 z2 z3 all the way to zk right uh, and how will we assign these each of the variables right uh, 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 each of the variables is for each of the values each of the values attainable by variables right so what are the values attainable by x1 values attainable by x1 are 1 2 or 3 what are the values attainable by x2 1 2 or 3 so for each of these values we will have a z1 so z1 z2 z3 z4 z5 z6 and so on right so those are the dummy variables attached to each of the values attainable by the variables x1 x2 x3 and these dummy variables we will define them to be binary so zk will be one if the variable with which it is associated associated takes on a value so if x1 really takes on a value equal to one in our data then we will say that z1 will be one let us say on the other hand x1 takes on a value two then z2 will be one or z2 will be zero if x1 takes on a value actually 3 then z3 will be 1 otherwise z3 will be 0 and so on and so forth so all these dummy variables actually are binary variables depending on what value does the variable actually take right so those are our dummy variables therefore what does that become our goal our goal which was originally to find out whether xj belongs to a particular subset now can be changed now it can be written in terms of z variables and then we can say that the goal of association rule mining uh, is to now say that uh, we will find a subset of integers we will find a subset of integers 1 to k right uh, which will be uh, which in our case was uh, three attrib uh, three uh, values that each attribute can take and there were seven or eight attributes so therefore 24 such uh, possibilities so a subset of these 24 right subset of these 24 so that that particular zk is actually one that particular zk is actually one and i want to find this probability to be large so that i find this subset right so i find this subset in such a way that this probability is large so that that becomes the goal of my uh, uh, algorithm so once again stating that in terms of uh, the data set what what are we trying to find we need to find uh, the subset of these 1 to 24 values right so 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 so on so uh, x1 takes on 2 x2 takes on 3 x3 takes on 1 x4 takes on 2 right so these are the subsets right uh, so this are most frequent and therefore that probability is the largest right that's what we are saying now this probability can be estimated using the data because i know what what is the most frequent value for x1 what is the most frequent value of x2 and that corresponding zk will actually be equal to 1 right uh, that corresponding xk will be actually equal to 1 maximum number of times and therefore probability of zk being equal to 1 will be higher now that can be estimated using the data how will we estimate that using the data so uh, we will take the data which is capital n right uh, capital n uh, uh, values uh, so these are the uh, 20 suppliers and uh, then uh, zik zik will uh, tell us the ith row and the kth attribute value right uh, kth, kth value right 
so uh, now this uh, this uh, zik uh, this zik is essentially the value of that k in the ith row right uh, remember we had each row for each supplier and uh, uh, if uh, if particular if uh, let us say for senior management uh, we had uh, three uh, we had three for that uh, uh, we had three for that uh, senior management for that particular uh, supplier so that particular zk uh, will actually be uh, one otherwise all the other zks will be zero right uh, and that's what we mean by zik zik okay so this probability is actually called the support right of the item set k and remember item set k uh, is the set of all the possible k's right so this analysis is called market basket analysis this an uh, analysis is called market basket analysis let's go one step ahead and use something called a priori algorithm uh, there are lots of uh, literature available on a priori algorithm i refer you to that as i said earlier uh, uh, hasty and uh, tipshiran's uh, book uh, also has a good very extremely good description of uh, uh, a priori algorithm i refer you to that we will summarize it in couple of slides so what is a priori, a priori algorithm first thing that the a priori algorithm does it it sets the minimum threshold on the support what is this threshold uh, threshold is on the probability probability that uh, uh, zk values are actually equal to 1 right uh, intersection intersection of out of all sets right uh, now uh, for each of these high support uh, uh, sets then we can find association rules how do we find association rules uh, first of all we create these disjoint sets uh, a and b uh, and uh, then we partition this zk uh, in either in set a or set b uh, now this set a is actually called uh, antecedent and the b is called consequent uh, what is this uh, support then support uh, support is indicated by t function t uh, uh, a leading to b is the fraction of observations in the union of a and b in the union of a and b right so this can be treated as a proxy for the joint probability of a and b what is the probability that customer gets a high rating uh, uh, customer gets a not customer supplier gets a high rating on senior management as well as employee skills as well as right uh, so joint probability so what does the a priori algorithm do the first thing that the a priori algorithm does is to put a minimum threshold is to put a minimum threshold on this support right on this support uh, so let us this, let let's say that this threshold is t uh, what is the support support we said is the probability uh, is the probability where uh, intersection of all the uh, zk is one uh, uh, for all the intersection of the item set k the the k this k right uh, this k so uh, uh, that is called support and uh, uh, um, a priori algorithm starts by putting up a minimum threshold on that and for all these high support uh, item sets uh, we can actually now create uh, association rules so for that uh, we will create two sets set a and set b and partition the zk values uh, uh, partition the zk values uh, either in set a or set b so what is the support then support can be defined uh, as a fraction of uh, observations that are in a and b so uh, this can be considered as the joint probability of a and b joint probability of a and b where a is called antecedent set and b is called consequent set right consequent set now let us define two more terms that are used in a priori algorithm uh, the next one is called confidence right confidence what is confidence confidence uh, can be considered to be a proxy for conditional probability of b given a right uh, conditional probability of b given a if a is given what is the probability of b happening some kind of proxy which is calculated as uh, support for a uh, lead leading to b divided by the support for a the total observations in set a right uh, uh, the, the probability of at set a not not total observations probability of observations in set a fraction of observations in set a and fraction of observations in a given giving to b so that is called confidence and using confidence we calculate what is called as lift what is we we'll calculate lift so what is lift lift is a, a, a ratio of confidence divided by expected confidence so ex expected uh, 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 right uh, confidence is t of b lift for a given b is confidence of a given b and uh, uh, b given a uh, lift of b given a and uh, confidence of b given a divided by uh, the probability of the fraction of observations in b right so using these three right using these three we can then create rules of association 
using these three, we can now create rules of association. Now let us go back to data and calculate the uh, support, confidence and lift for the supplier data to understand what kind of association rules are available that can then define the cluster of suppliers. Okay, so what are what again what, summarizing what what are we looking for? We are looking for uh, 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 generalizations, saying that uh, uh, when uh, senior management uh, uh, is of good quality, 80% of the time uh, the quality uh, uh, reputation is good for that supplier. When uh, uh, employee skills are very high, that is that is the A part, right? What will happen? Uh, that is the antecedent. What will be consequent? Uh, we can say, uh, well, 40% of the time the supplier charges a price premium. So those are the kind of association rules we wish to find out using data and that will be done through calculation of support, confidence and lift. I will end my session here and now Rohit will take over and actually run this in Python and show us the values of support, confidence and lift and then draw inferences based on that. Okay, so uh, let us uh, let us uh, uh, end the session here and uh, wait for Rohit's uh, session using Python.